the hope of, the hope of glory, but Christ in you. And I'm to see Christ in you. I'm to have an attitude and a spirit that would be able to see past any flaws that we might have as humans and begin to see Christ. How many times do we come to church looking for Christ? So why every time I come to church I look for Christ? Yes. Well, did you see Christ in me? Yeah. Did you see Christ in your brothers and your sisters? Oh, no, I didn't look there. I was looking other places. Well, let me tell you where Jesus is tonight. Let me tell you where I think Jesus is. It's Christ in you. The hope of glory. Good to be here tonight. And be with my good friend, Brother Donneville, through the years. Many years now, 20 some years, we've been friends and Brother Marlo and the church is great. You know, all yes. your brothers, we love you and appreciate you. And, and uh, just had to come on down tonight and show Brother Zonneville that we're standing with him and you here at Sebring praying for you. Our church does pray for you. Praise for Brother yes. uh, Marlo's church in Bradenton also and many others. But uh, we're just happy to see God working again and moving and the directions and just lets us know this if we hold on. Yeah. We just keep holding on. Yeah. 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 So let go. We hold on. Yeah. And uh, let God have his way. Yeah. In whatever area or avenue that God wants to go, be flexible. Yeah. And uh, mm -hmm. I think that the, another term of, of uh, building block that Brother Zonville was talking about is flexibility. flexibility. Yeah. Yeah. Be, be flexible. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah. we've had too many uh, too many cement blocks yes, and too many yeah. hard, hard hard things, yes. cement blocks and yes. the hard rocks and big stones yes. and uh, you can't move them too much and you can't feel them too much Amen. but you can feel somebody flex it's a life, oh, yes. that's life yes. and uh, yes. this is what God's work is all about, is life yes. Yes. and understand that uh, we were talking about this, body and and the important the parts of the body and how great it is to be a uh, part of the body of Christ and the work of the Lord and the uh, great things that is being done. And then there's many members to the body. Brother Marl mentioned just a couple of them, but there's many members of the body. And every member, Paul said, is important. Can we all say that? I am important. I am important. And I'd like the saints of God to feel they're important to you. Because too long, the saints of God have felt like they were just numbers. They were just dollar bills. They were just a uh, 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 little uh, heat source in the in the building of the of the local church. But we're important today. You're important today. And Brother Zonneville was talking about the unity and the oneness. And did you know you were saved by the same blood I was? Right. Yeah. I don't care where you feel like you are on God's uh, God's ladder of success or religion or heaven or hell or whatever, but I was saved with the same blood you were. Right. And when I look at the common denominator, it, it gives me an attitude adjustment because God loved you too. And God loved me. And so therefore... Why couldn't I love something God loves? He loved you enough to give you the Spirit. You got the baptism of the Holy Ghost in your life. And he yeah. he uh, called us for a purpose and for a reason. And yeah. We all understand the uh, importance of the church at the end of this age. And it was reiterated tonight in Brother Zonigo's talk. And, and uh, that's, that's me. That's you. Yes. We're the ones Amen. that's here. <laughs> As he said, Abraham isn't here to do it. Right. And, uh, Paul isn't here to do it. Right. That's you that's got to. We have to rise up to the occasion yes. and realize that God can use you. Yes. God can yes. use me. I say yes. to the saints many times in Tampa. I say, how many of you came to church tonight thinking that you might give a message in tongues and interpretation? How many of you came to church tonight thinking we'd even have message in tongues? And interpretation. Why wouldn't we start thinking about that? Because of the great benefit that it has to every one of us as we reach out to the Lord and let the Lord have His way in our life. There's no reason we can't have the gifts of the Spirit in our midst. Healings and miracles, what Marla was talking about. You've got the same Holy Ghost Paul had. Got the same Holy Ghost that Peter had. Such as I have, give I unto you. Well, why don't we rise up as saints of God and say, such as Peter had, I have, give I unto you. Yeah, yeah. Rise up, yeah. 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 the mission and doing the will of God. And 
And uh, that the submission is the key to success in Christ. And uh, we can submit to the Lord and do His will. We would be more blessed of God. God's in control of our blessings. And God's in control of His desires and His wants in our lives and in this world. And then He calls us as uh, an individual to do something for Him. He wants us to submit and to do it. Paul said in Ephesians, the first chapter, he said, we were called unto obedience to the faith, yes. to what God wants. And he said, we have to know that He's God. I'm not God. He's God. He's God. And, uh, he's not my servant. I'm His servant. And it's not my will, but it's His will that has to be done. We have to have an attitude adjustment. Yes, He can use me. Yes, He can use you. We should all say that. Yes, God can use me. We have the Word of God, don't we? And we have the 15th chapter of uh, Romans, where Paul said the things that were written for time are written for our learning. learning. That we through patience and comfort, praise God, patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. When we look at these uh, individuals in the Bible and there are examples and the little old Gideon sitting there behind that stack of corn and, and uh, afraid and fearful and uh, God didn't look at him that way though. God don't look at you that way. No, no. He looks at you as a son of God. He looks at you as he saved you. He died for you on the cross. He shed his blood. And the angel came down. And I always get a shake when I hear that because the angel looked at him like he would look at you. Like he would look at any one of us. Any one of us. He's a fearful little guy standing behind the corn with scared of the, the Mennonites. Scared of the world, scared of what's going on in the world and in the church and all whatever the devil wants to throw at you. And the angel said, Thou man, he mighty man of valor. Hallelujah. Oh, Woo! I'll tell you, you might not feel like a mighty man of valor. I'd like you to rise up again a little bit tonight. Get a little bit more in your heart about what God can do for you. As mighty men, not through our own strength and awkwardness, we've done that before, but through Christ, we can conquer all of it. Through Christ, we're more than conquerors. examples in the Bible. I'm looking at old, uh, old Jonah yeah. as he was told by God to go down to Nineveh. Yeah. How many times has God spoke to you? Yeah. How many times have you even thought, is this God speaking to me? We need to be more oriented yeah. to the Word of God, to the God talking to us, yeah. to the unctions yeah. of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Yeah. John said, we have an unction from the Holy One. Yeah. My God, saints of God, you have an unction from the Holy One. And you feel it, do you know Holy Ghost moves in your life. And he said, we have an unction from the Holy One. Praise God. There was a man called Jonah. God told him to go to Nineveh. We know the story. And I'm not going to tell the whole story. I'm telling you, that man could have been used of God. But he resisted God. He didn't believe God. How many saints of God today are down and out? And they're, they're, they're made low. And they don't feel too self-worth and of God in their life anymore. But I'm telling you, God's the same yesterday, today, and forever. I'm tired of not doing God's way. I'm tired of God speaking and I'm saying I can't do it. I'm tired of God speaking. Where is God anyway? He said, I am the Lord thy God. He said, I am that I am the sense of Moses said, I can't even speak. Yeah, I can't even speak. God said, don't worry about speaking. If I'll speak to you, you speak to Aaron. He had it all planned out. God's got it all planned out, sins of God. Don't worry about the things you cannot change. Don't worry about what God is doing today. Yes, I'm not afraid of tomorrow. I know the one that holds tomorrow. I'm not afraid of what's going to happen in the next 10 days, 10 years, 25 years. I know who holds the 25 years. We're in good hands, saints of God. He thought he'd run away from God. Now, I know a lot of saints of God, maybe there's some here tonight, been running away from God. You know where God told you to go. You know what God told you to do. You've been praying. You've had dreams. You've had God feel, give you a feeling deep down in your heart, the still small voice, and you run just like Jonah. Aren't you tired of the fish's belly? Aren't you tired of the seeds, the seaweeds around your ears? Aren't you tired of all of those things? 
when he said his soul was brought down to hell. Brother, there was one thing that Jonah did, and I think God's people ought to rise up tonight and call on the name of the Lord. Call on the name of the Lord.